Now, I couldn't lead in the downswing with my right arm until I was shown this drill by my old coach, which emulates this picture here. Tiger Woods with his old coach, Butch Harmon. See how he's got his hand just on the outside of that trail arm. And what I'm gonna show you is having two other drills and doing a routine of ultimately three drills together, which will fix even the worst of right arm movements in your golf swing. Because as we know, that right arm moving correctly is so instrumental to playing good golf. If we're having that right arm move in, that's gonna help us massively for compressing the ball. It's gonna help for shallowing out that club and really making that body in control going through that golf ball. So for better strikes, better distance, better compression of the golf ball. Where we know if we have a poor trail arm movement with the elbow getting behind, pointing behind the body, that's gonna cause you to get steep, stand up early, extend, flip, hit poor strikes. You could even top it really easily. It's not a good thing to do. So let's get straight into the drills. So the drill with my old coach was pretty much exactly what you're seeing Tiger Woods and Butch Harmon do here with the hand out there. So in the lesson, of course, I could do that nicely because I could sometimes get that trail arm moving a little bit behind me. I have some poor shoulder mobility, which can cause me to do that, which one of the drills is gonna help you for your shoulder mobility. But him having that drill, just like you're seeing with Tiger, was great, but just like all of you, I practiced on my own. So I couldn't do that drill without my coach being there. So what did we do? We improvised. We hit some shots and some practice swings with one arm, but got our left arm behind the elbow, just like you're seeing with Tiger and Butch. So this would stop me from getting that elbow to start going behind the body, which gets you in that internally rotated shoulder position that gets us in all the nasty positions with the club, steep, early extension, all the horrible stuff. So this will prevent me from doing that. It keeps that elbow pointing down and can make it so I can lead better with that trail, trail arm more Ben Hogan style there. So just doing that to start off with practice swings with that trail arm, preventing it from going back was great. That was the first step. And then getting yourself to where you're nipping some balls down there. Again, okay, that lead arm just behind the trail elbow there, still relaxing that arm. Don't have it dead straight. You want it relaxed. And then just nipping some little ones down there just to start off with. Don't worry about how you're hitting the ball. When you're doing this, doesn't matter because you're hitting it with one arm. You just want to get the feeling. And what you're going to notice is your body is going to start to move more. It's going to start to rotate to generate a little bit of power into it. Like I said, you're not going to hit the ball anywhere doing this drill, but to get a strike on it, to get a little bit of power, you're going to have to move your body, which is why keeping that trail arm in front of you is such a good thing and to be leading because it forces you to move your body. Now, Funnily enough, even though the look of it is like the trail arm is leading, because you can physically see on the good players when they start moving down, that trail arm moving front. But you know, in reality, they're not actually physically trying to fire that trail arm in. They're just getting it into a good position and their body movement is controlling that trail arm. So when that trail arm gets in, funnily enough, it's controlled by good body movement in transition. But also that trail arm into being in a good position keeps the body moving nicely. So it's kind of like a thing that helps in both areas. But this is one that really helps, and I've got loads of videos on about how to move the body a little bit better to influence the arms. So just doing this drill, really gets that body moving. And then that gave that real good distinct feeling there of what it feels like to keep that arm nicely in front. Awesome. Love it. So there's two other drills though that would be really good to do alongside this as a routine. So here is the routine. Like I said, for me, I struggled with shoulder mobility. I have, still do have quite poor external right shoulder rotation. That's about as much as I can do there. So that's how you can test it, just by getting your arm into that 90 degree angle and get it to go back as far as you can go. So that's why if people have poor trail shoulder mobility, it is not an excuse to not get that trail arm moving in front of the downswing. That's where you can improve it. That's where number one, the nunchuck drill, first drill here. So that's where if you grab the club by the club head and you flip the shaft to where it's on the right hand side, the right forearm, and grip it with your hand, then what I want you to do, turn up to the top of your swing. And now you can see, just like with Tiger, with Butch with a hand right there, you can see that it's giving me that exact same sensation, almost like someone's pushing the trail arm in. Because now I want to turn the downswing, so get my left hip to go back and rotate, and then just give this a pull in. 
So there we go. So it's training the body movement. Again, there's videos all on my channel about how to get the good body movement in transition to get the right arm leading from that fashion. But for me, this is what helped the most for me. And that is that left hip going back. If you don't do that, the right arm isn't gonna get in front of you. So even with really good shoulder mobility, but this really stretches out that shoulder. So left hip going back, pull it in front, just with a the hand there, stretches out that shoulder a ton. Even just doing that, really stretches out, feels good. When I say it feels good, it hurts, it does, but it stretches out and gets you ready to be able to move it nicely. So you can view it as kind of like almost like a technical thing, but also just warming up that shoulder capsule. So, okay, then what we do, we go straight into one arm. So whether we do that in practice swings or whether we do that with a golf ball, whatever you feel comfortable with, start off doing it practice swings because it's hard to do with a ball. So let's say we do a bunch of those. Let's say we do a good let's say 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of doing that alone. Or even if we want to do it for a shorter period of time, handful of balls, let's say about 20 balls, doing that 10 to 20 balls, just to get that feeling. And then what we'd want to do, so that's our second portion of that little routine. So we go from nunchuck to one arm. We know what to do with the one arm. So this is the next portion. This is a brilliant one. Because again, teaches how the body to move also. Grab an alignment stick. So now put the alignment stick all the way through your belt loops. So all the way through, just like that. It's through an equal side. So a lot of you have been watching the channel for a while, you know I talk about a drill like this with a tiny bit coming out on the right. But for this, we want it coming out quite a lot. Because if you then move in that downswing and that trail arm is not getting in front of the body, that's gonna cause the trail arm to get behind the body and it's gonna cause the club hit this. So and that's for players also, if they do the cardinal sin that gets your right arm stuck, and that is then pushing the right hip forward, that's gonna get the club hitting that. Of course, it's gonna get you stuck with this. You're not gonna be able to hit the ball. So that's where doing those other drills, getting that shoulder nice and loose, doing the drill that really helped me, this one, like this routine. We didn't do this routine. This is something I've devised if I would have done back in the day if I had the knowledge for it. But this is where we would have to keep that right side back and get the left side going back at the same time. That will then keep that right arm in front. Like I talk about on my channel, hip flexion. If the right hip fires forward too early, it's gonna hit it. So you've got to keep that right side back, but left side going back and the stick to disappear around. If you've been getting in your good reps there to get your shoulder ready, and then your right arm's gonna lead, don't hit it with your side, let those hips sink back to give you space. Boom. So that's where as well, one really important thing this teaches for a lot of you is you have to, if you're gonna successfully get that trail arm to lead and get in front, you have to have your right hip move back. Gives you more space there to where then you can go and move in. So many golfers don't turn their hips enough. If you get that right hip moving back, that's gonna give you more space and more time to get the right arm moving in front. If you don't turn the hips enough, doesn't matter how hard you try, you're probably still gonna hit that. So you've gotta get that right hip moving back, then left hip, it's gonna be so much easier to get that right arm falling in front of the body. Gets the arms and body really in sync with each other. Right hip back, left hip back, you're gonna have no problem getting the right arm in front and not hitting this stick. So let's do one there. I don't, none of this, I'm actually physically thinking about that right arm going in front. It's just happening from good body movement, like I said with my other videos. There we go, so I was actually quite close to hitting it with my arms through the ball told me there from that that I didn't turn hard enough through the golf ball. Because whenever the rotation slows down, hand path drops too much, which you're gonna hit the stick if that happens. So again, to another one. Oh, lovely strike. Brilliant. If you do that, let's say then for the vast majority of the rest of your practice, you can go and rep that drill out, maybe then doing a bunch more with right arm there again, the, these are just drills to do in a routine. You don't have to do it to an exact T of doing a certain amount. Just do what you feel like you need to. Some players will need to do more nunchuck drill to stretch out that shoulder. But regardless, get those grouping of drills into a practice session, devise it, move it around how you want to. For yourself, what one you like the most, you can do the most of. And then at the end, take it all away and feel those same feels. Boom. And then, after a ton of time, that's gonna get in there. So then it's just repping it out over and over and over again. 
And that's how, especially with that drill there, the one-armed one, that's how I got myself to where my trail arm was moving better, just gave me a little feel to get it in front. And the nunchuck drill did help me a ton to get it all stretched out. But for that routine, there's a way that I feel like every golfer can benefit from a ton. I would have jumped on that if that was something that I knew back in the day to do that. Little free, group, free drills grouped together. So if you enjoyed this video, click that like button if you want more golf instruction, just like that. Hit the subscribe button and hit that bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video.